Welcome back. In this video, I want to talk about even more ways that you can add additional space and organization to your home remote design. So in the previous video, we talked about creating this scroll functionality, which is great, but we also want to have some functionality with some real navigational aspects. And for that, we're going to have to use pages and page groups. This is something that I should have ultimately covered earlier in the video, but up until this point and using the example that we have been, we've been able to get away with just using a single page because we've almost been completely just remaking this existing Visio remote as well as a couple of controls from the Anki remote as well. But going forward, once we add Cody in the next video, we're really gonna expand upon the number of controls that we need and they're not gonna be compatible with the TV controls that we've already got integrated here on screen. So let's talk about those. They're both up available here in the pages area and you basically got two options. You can have page groups here located in the new button and what that does is it creates some additional page groups here when you click on this navigator button that's automatically created within home remote and you've got an option here mine just happens to be page group this is the only one that I have right now and it happens to be called main I'm gonna go ahead and modify that just for some clarity there so you can see the page group has been changed to main now the other option we have is additional pages themselves within the page groups and those are going to show up as tabs down here. I'll create one now so you can see what that looks like. So we've got our initial page where we've made everything up until this point and then we've also got this second tab. Now you can tell right now they're both called tab but we can change that as well just by opening this navigation uh, window here and displaying the child objects within the main page group. So I'm going to select page 0 which is the page we've been working on all along and I'm going to change its name from tab to watch TV. You can see that change up here at the top. I'm going to change the next one to QWERTY, which is where we're going to eventually make a keyboard. And then page two, I'm going to change this one to Cody, which is where some commands are going to come from. Now, I do have everything still in this main page, and I'm going to change this main at this point to something a little more identifiable. You could do theater or TV room, but in my case, I'm going to pull from my Control 4 experience and just say watch, and I'm going to make the name and the title the same. Watch indicating, obviously, because I can watch anything in here, TVs, movies, etc. So what other kind of page groups might we want to have for navigation? Uh, well, good ideas might be for listen, for uh, if I was going to use the Pandora or Spotify integration on my audio receiver, as well as AM and FM radio. Or, for example, maybe uh, temperature, HVAC, or thermostats, if you're into controlling nests or something like that. Or maybe you want to do home automation involving lighting or doors, if you've got garage doors or gates, etc. So we can create a bunch of them. I'm going to create one now just as an example and just go ahead and change it to listen just off the chance that I'm probably going to do some audio integration next. So you can see here that I can change between these page groups. I've got watch, which contains all of our existing tabs or pages, and then I've also got listen here as well, which currently controls uh, nothing. It's just got its initial page, which is called page three. You can see that it creates all the pages in a numerical value or in a numerical sequence. And also, even if you delete a page, it's never going to recreate that same page. That way, no bad references get made. Uh, it is important to keep track of these page numbers that we've got here. This one's called page0.xaml. I'll get into that in a much later video where we talk about all the files that are actually being stored in your .hrp file. This one, specifically called page0, actually contains all the information that we've been working on as far as the UI goes up until this point. And we might need those page references later when we add some macros that involve swapping some pages automatically. So I hope you can see there's actually a couple of ways to create a vast amount of space and organization within your remote, especially if you made it this far in the videos, chances are you might have a larger system, uh, maybe even than I have here, and you're looking for how you're going to all design this at the beginning. And you'll notice when I created this second tab and it added this layer of the tab pages at the top, you can notice it kind of actually did some damage to my design because these volume controls, which were initially, I wanted them here at the bottom of the remote without any scrolling. I actually pushed them off down and I now have to scroll to them to get that. I don't like that. So you need to keep things in mind like that and make sure that you've got all of your sort of initial design elements created from the very beginning so that you don't end up having to go back and do a lot of extra work. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this now just because 
it's pretty easy. I think this grid, the second grid, is a little too big. Uh, so I'm going to change it by changing the parent row that's controlling it, uh, which is this one right here. I'm going to go probably from 5 to 6 and see if that doesn't size things up a little better. Uh, again, we'll click off of it and click back on. Looks like it might need even a little bit more than that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and change the row down to uh, 4 for this one. And maybe down to 5 for this top one too. Okay, perfect. Click off and click back on. Go ahead and go into the runtime, just make sure everything looks great. Here's our buttons. Looks like we could use a little more work here on this one. We can cover that in a later video. Still got all our scroll functionality here. We can click to our different pages and we can also go to our other page group. Okay, perfect. Um, that is all for this one. Thanks.